Mental Testing and Intelligence Theory Yerkes Army Alpha and Beta Test History of Psychology, 182 Professor Michael Botwin, California State University, Fresno The first mass use of testing in the United States happened during the First World War. During the war, there was a new specialization required for the military that hadn't been there before. This is that story. The First World War started in 1914. The United States entered the First World War in 1917. There was a mass influx of recruits and draftees into the military. And the Army previously had no way of sorting out individuals for appropriate jobs. Prior to World War I, wars were fought rather differently. Here's a picture of a Napoleonic battle in Europe in the 1800s. You can see here basically what happens. Our men stand in lines and shoot at each other. And then they charge and batter each other with rifles and bayonets and such. This was the standard way of fighting European-style wars up until the late 1800s. In fact, this is primarily how the American Civil War was fought. World War I starts and it is a technological war. Now many of the technologies that were used in World War I existed before that, but all of a sudden you had millions of new recruits in the United States Army and they needed to be sorted out due to new technology of warfare. So here are some infantry soldiers with modern rifles and equipment going over the top in a trench. First World War was the first massive use of the machine gun as a weapon of war and was responsible for thousands and thousands of deaths. And it was a complex weapon that needed someone technologically oriented to take care of it. Tanks were introduced into World War I for the first time. First by the British. And here is an example of a British and a French tank. And as you could imagine, tanks require quite a bit of mechanical prowess and skills to keep moving. Also, this was the first war that air power played a significant role. And you needed individuals who could be trained as pilots, who could maintain the aircraft, and do other things. On top of it, you needed individuals with skills in logistics to keep all of this moving and running, and to make sure the supplies and resources got to the right place at the right time. So what's an army to do? Robert Yerkes, a primatologist, thought that it might be very useful to the United States Army to test recruits and draftees for intelligence. He assembled a group of psychologists to do this task, and eventually they were made members of the United States Army, with Yerkes having the rank of major. Later, due for his work in primatology, there would be the Yerkes Primate Center, named after him. There were two versions of the Army Intelligence Test, the Army Alpha Test and the Army Beta Test. The Alpha was a written test used to evaluate soldiers that were literate for entrance into the Army during World War I. The Alpha could be administered to large groups and took less than an hour to complete. And it was a composite test based on Yerkes' study of current ways of assessing intelligence. Here are some sample items from the Army Alpha. 
A company of soldiers advanced six miles and retreated two miles. How far was it from the first position? Even if you're not really great with story problems, hopefully you can figure that one out as a college student. Here's something a little bit harder. A dealer bought some mules for $1,200. He sold them for $1,500, making $50 on each mule. How many mules were there? So do the math. Maybe you might come up with six, which would be the same answer I did. Thermometers are useful because they regulate temperature. They tell us how warm it is. They contain mercury. Obviously, the answer is B. A machine gun is more deadly than a rifle because it was invented more recently, fires more rapidly, can be used with less training. Again, the answer obviously is B. There are some biased items on the Army Alpha test that would pick up social economic status, geography, uh, other kinds of things. So Crisco is A. Now I wonder if you can tell me what Crisco is. It's a product that we don't use that often today. Uh, don't get mistaken and think it's toothpaste because it is a food product. It's basically a large shortening type thing. Now we use it primarily for baking. Uh, people used to use it frequently before there was vegetable oil. But most people at the turn of the 20th century didn't buy Crisco because it was expensive and it was a semi-luxury item. Most people would keep the fat from cooking, especially things like bacon, and use that for other cooking processes. Here's another one. Christy Mathewson is famous as a writer, artist, baseball player, comedian. Well, even if you're a baseball fan, you might not know who Christy Matthews' son is because he was a baseball player around the turn of the century. So, this is one of the first times that people started to notice that biased items show up in intelligence tests. Here's another one. Yerkes Army Alpha by a sample item. Washington is to Adams as first is to second. I don't know. Third base. Look that one up. Many of the types of questions used on the Army Alpha test have become common formats for more modern intelligence tests. There was a second version of the Army Intelligence Test, and that was the Army Beta Test. Now, the Beta Test was a pictorial test for men who were illiterate or who had failed, if you can fail an intelligence test, the Alpha Test. Now, you might think that's not that big of a problem, but you have to remember in the early 20th century, our country was very agricultural and very rural. Education was not standardized. Many people didn't finish their high school education at the time, and many people in rural areas were illiterate. So the Army had to deal with a large number of people who couldn't read and write. The beta had seven parts, including running a maze with a pencil on a piece of paper, not actually running the maze, number work, and the completion picture task. Here's a page from the Army beta. 
and the examinees were asked to identify what's missing from each picture. I'm not going to go through all 17 pictures, but if you look at one, it's obvious the mouth is missing, two, the eyes are missing, till you get to 20, where you have one of the diamonds on the card missing. Again, you can see some kind of cultural biases here. If you have no experience using playing cards, uh, you're not going to be able to get 20 right. For those of you that... Oh, too fast. For those of you that need to know answers to questions, here's the answer key for the first 11 items. And it's hard to tell that there's actually a corkscrew that should be missing from the knife. And, <laughs> excuse me, the answers for the rest of the items. And you can see that, for example, 15, the guy's missing his bowling ball. There was an individual examination and a spoken test for those individuals who failed the beta. Now, one of the issues that comes up are racial and ethnic issues, and we'll look at that at the end of our discussion of these tests, which is right here. This is from a very, very old uh, test presentation. It shows the average scores for different groups of individuals. And you can see that commissioned officers, non-commissioned officers are the highest. There are some inappropriate ethnic labels here, but that's because of the age of this chart. So Negro officers are the next highest group. And you can see it goes down by ethnicity. Uh, you have primarily Northern Europeans till you get near the bottom where you get individuals from foreign countries, individuals from Eastern and Southern European countries. Uh, I'm primarily Polish. You can see my ethnicity at a very low score there. And this started actually many issues in terms of race and IQ. However, taking a relatively simple test was not, as we know, a really good indication of true intelligence as these tests uh, had many biases that have been overcome in more modern versions of intelligence test. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020, Professor Michael D. Botwin, all rights reserved.